Welcome friends to the 12th part of the series where we'll be creating a chat app using Flutterflow and Superbase. In this video, we'll be starting on the chat messaging function and also working on our chat group UI over here and as well as the messaging function as well. So let's go back to Flutterflow over here and we'll just work on our chat page over here. So the first thing that we want to work on is this top bar app bar over here. So we scroll down over here and we can right click the text under the app bar and we can wrap this widget inside a row. And now inside this row, you want to add some widgets. You want to add an icon widget. And we'll just add the icon widget. And we also want to add a circle image for the profile picture of the chat group. So for the circle image, let's just decrease the diameter to, let's say, 30 for now, or maybe 40. And let's move this icon above the text widget so that it's on the left. And for the row over here, let's just add some padding on the left and the right. So let's add left padding of 16 and right padding of 16 as well. And let's also move the circle image above the text image so that the circle image is to the left of the title over here. So with the circle image selected, let's just add some left padding, let's say of 60, so that it's more towards the center. And let's also add some right padding of 12, so that there's some space between the image over here and the title. Maybe let's reduce this left padding to around 40. Now let's click on the icon over here and let's change the icon to a back arrow. So just search back and let's just choose this back arrow over here. And you can also change the icon color if you want to. Let's just choose this primary icon color. Okay, so now we want to link the circle image to the actual chat group profile picture as well as this text widget to the actual chat group title. So in order to do that, we have to create some page parameters so that we can pass our chat profile image as well as our chat uh, group title to these widgets over here. So with the chat page selected over here, we want to go to page parameters and we'll click on the plus icon and we'll add some parameters. Let's name it the group image. For the type, it will be an image path and it will be required. And we'll just leave this default parameter value to be null. We can add another parameter. This time it will be the group name. And for the type, it'll just be a string. And we can click on confirm. And now that we've created our page parameters over here, we can set our page parameters to these circle widget as well as this text widget over here. So with the circle with image selected, we'll scroll down into the path. And for the path, we'll set the path as our group image page parameter. And for the text widget over here, We'll set the text property as our group name page parameter. Now for the default variable value, we'll just say we'll just put it as a space, and for this space as well. All right, so now we have set these two widgets to our page parameters, and you can see that over on the top here we have some errors. If you click on this. You can see that when we press this button to create a new chat group and we navigate to our chat page, the error occurs because we are not passing the required parameters into this chat page. So we will just click on pass. And for the group image, we want to pass our widget state and it will be the uploaded file URL. And as for the group name, 
the value that we want to pass is our widget state and we want to pass our group name text field over here so then now we can just close this over here and there are two more errors over here and this one is for creating a new contact so the error occurs because we also didn't pass our required parameters so for this it'll be the same thing but for this group image we'll have to pass our component state instead and since this is one selected contact only we have to pass the selected user data and we'll have to select json path and the path will be profile Im underscore image underscore path and we'll click on confirm as for the group name we also want to pass the component state the selected user data we want to select json path and the json path will be dot name so we'll click on confirm and now you should see that the errors over here are all gone so now that we're finished with this app bar on top over here we have two things left to do we have to deal with this middle portion where all the messages are shown over here as well as this bottom portion over here which contains a text field to allow the user to enter some messages so going back to our chat page over here inside our column over here we'll have to add another container and this container will have a width of infinite width and for the fill color we'll just remove the fill color by pressing on this x icon over here so it'll be a transparent container and inside this container will contain a column widget and this column will store all our messages that the user receives or sends and for this container we'll set the container to have a fixed height of let's say percentage of 70 percent so it spans all the way here let's just change it, the height to perhaps 80 percent instead or maybe that's too much let's change it to 75 percent so the container will take up this much space over here and as for the remaining space over here this remaining space will be for this bottom section over here so inside the main column we'll add one last widget which is a container and this container will hold our text field over here so for this container let's just change the fill color to alternate fill color mm. for some reason this container seems to be cut off a bit over here let me see what's wrong with it it looks like a column over here is not fully taking up the whole space the whole length of the remaining page and if you click on the chat page over here that's probably due to the save area over here so we can disable the save area and now if we go back to our main column over here we can see that the column is taking up the whole of the remaining space as indicated by the green border over here so we can select on back on this container for the width it will be infinite and for the height let's just change it to 150 so that it takes up all of the remaining space over here and inside this container you want to add two things which is this add icon in order to allow the user to add a picture as well as this text field over here to allow the user to type in messages so inside this container we'll just add a row and inside the row we'll add two widgets an icon as well as a text field widget
So for the text field widget, we want to set our widget styling to our text field theme that we have created earlier. And if we scroll down all the way over here, we can change our border radius and increase it to a higher value of, let's say, 30. So that now it's more curved and looks like what we wanted in our design. And now for this icon over here, we'll just change it instead of a settings outline to a plus icon. Let's just use this one over here. And now to align this row all the way to the top, we'll select the container and we'll scroll down. And under the child alignment property, we'll select this one over here so that the row gets pushed to the top now. And if you want to add a little bit more padding, we will select the row over here. And for padding, we'll add some top padding of let's say 12. And let's also add some right padding of 8. And sorry, left and right padding of 8. Alright, looks good. Now for our text view, we have to do one last thing, which is to change the number of max lines. So we'll change the number of max lines to 3, so that the user is able to type a longer message. And for minimum lines, it'll be 1. And let's change this label text to type something. Smiley face. Okay, so now that we're done with this bottom section over here, let's work on the middle section over here where the messages are actually being shown. So let's try to create this message text container over here. So with the center column selected, we'll add a container widget. And for this container widget, We'll change the fill color to a nice pastel green. We'll add some border radius all around of let's say 8. We'll also add some padding all around of 8 as well. So for our messages, we want to align it all to the right. So for our alignment over here, we'll choose align to the right. And we also want to add some maximum width that our message is able to be so that our messages do not go and cover the whole width of the screen. So for our maximum width, let's just put it as a percentage and let's put it as 70% of the width of the screen. And for our minimum width, we'll just leave that as empty for now. We also can remove this height value over here so that it takes the height of how much text there is inside. So now in our message, we want to add three things, which is firstly, the name of the sender, secondly, the message itself, and thirdly, the timestamp over here. So in our message container, we'll add a column over here. And inside this column, we need to add the three things, which is firstly, the name of the sender. Secondly, the actual message itself, which will be a text as well. And thirdly, the timestamp, which should also be a text. And for this column, let's also add some padding all around of let's say eight as well. So for the first 
text widget over here this will be the sender name so let's just put this text as sender name first and for the sender name let's just change the font weight to a bit more of a semi bold now for the body text We'll just write some text here first. And you can see that for some reason the message is being squished over here. So let's go back to our container over here. And let's see what's wrong. I think it's something to do with the max width. Let's change to pixel size instead. And let's give it a width of 300. Okay, yeah, you have to remove this width over here as well and you can give it a max width of 300 that seems good now for the last text over here this will be the timestamp so let's just change the text to timestamp first okay let's just do some arranging so for the sender name you want to align it to the left as for the body text, the alignment is fine. And for the timestamp text, we want to align it to the right. Let's just add some spacing in between the three texts. So with the column selected, we can add some item spacing of four. Okay, yeah, now it looks much better. And now it looks like what we want over here. So now we're done with the UI and in the next video, we'll work on actually creating the messaging function to allow users to send their messages. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.